I'm here with Muna Ali Youssef, a coach and facilitator. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background? I am originally from Saudi Arabia. I have been living in the UK for since 1998. I lived in many places. I lived in, I worked and studied in Saudi Arabia, in the US, in the UAE, and I've settled in the UK. I um, came to be engaged in coaching in 2006. I have started my coaching journey with uh, the co-active uh, coaching and then transitioned from that to ORSC and I have never looked back again. So what was your world project? World work? Okay, so my, my world work project was about uh, engaging young uh, females in Saudi Arabia, um, and the target, uh, the target audience was 11 to 17, but they were um, also divided in groups. Um, and the idea was to engage them in different exercises in the hope that they will start early on to basically forge a healthier relationship with their own selves and a healthier relationship with their identity and how they actually identify with being women, uh, being women who actually belong to a certain specific culture and specific background. What did it look like? How did you go about uh, doing this? I started it with a group of people that I know. The, the steps I took is talking to parents because in Saudi Arabia, it is not possible that you you know uh, jump to the kids without the parents consent and use parents who know me very well to talk to other parents to engage more, more girls in these exercises i prepare uh, different kind of um, exercises some of them have to do with diversity some of them have to do with um, concept about identity some of them have to do with self awareness okay so what I basically did, I took concepts like privilege and ranks from ORSC and um, set up a whole, like, um, I created all of these sheets with different boxes, different status, different privileges for them. To, this, is, this was just one of the exercises. And then they will choose whether, okay, uh, like, you know, if their parents, my parents are, educated to this degree or my parents or I've lived in the same place or my parents live with their my grandparents so I basically um, composed like sheets and squares of different privileges knowing other languages living abroad uh, going to private school versus international school so that was one of the exercises another exercise was about diversity about friendship um, and whether they basically go to school in the same uh, area, do they have friends from different nationalities? I also had um, training about just basically about identity uh, itself for them to, to see uh, how do they see their identity, you know, if they are wearing the headscarf, if they are not, uh, what is their view of them being women, what that certain concept about femininity means. So we used certain play method to discuss issues like trust, uh, friendship, um, fear, uh, shame, uh, things like that. But this was more of the 14 to 17 years old, not with the 11 and 13 to 13. So they were different things. And then they were like, exercises that I have basically adopted from ORSC about like working in silent, creating something. Uh, it is like the, um, the thread or the string exercise, but using different element. One of the exercises I did was with them to draw their, li their life journeys and mark important uh, point in their life journeys. So uh, the concept were simplified for 11 and 13, and then for the 14 to 17, where much um, they could do more with that concept. 
why did you decide to do this project? There is a lack of maybe two things, maybe two, three things. But the first thing is the absence of opportunity where girls can discuss or can be, become aware of how of their relationship with themselves, the privileges they have, even when they think that they are the weaker link within the family or within the society. That was one of the things. It's about awareness, really teaching them early, at early age as 11 that no, they have a voice and they account actually, even if they don't see it or even if the system doesn't show it that they count and they are part of a bigger system, of a big system and of a small system. So I wanted to actually show them that they count first. Second, I wanted them to be aware that they have voices and they have a stand and they can change the course of their life or they can push the system to change by expressing their voices, by ex expressing their stance. And the third one was about really empowerment. To me, it was very important to teach them how to be empowered, even on a small level and a small scale, to empower women and to have them realize that they do have this power. And what happens in our society is that we tend to very um, readily give it give that give our power to our parents to our teachers to you know uh, seniors in our family just because we feel like we can't go nowhere with it so showing them that no they can't actually and there was an important thing for me is to start um, using some of the questions using some of the idea from ORSC to help them also realize that what is like, do they really have healthy relationship with themselves? Do they really have a healthy view of who they are in terms of their identity? These are the three reasons I believe that I did this project for. That sounds, I mean, really important work. And that pretty much answers the next question, which was why is this course important? I think it's very self-evident. I still believe there is a lot of work that needs to be done in places like Saudi Arabia, the, you know, the Arab world. So maybe my next, my next stage should be really <clears throat> and engaging people beyond Saudi, not just girls in Saudi Arabia. Where would you go next if you could? If I could, I would use the coaching community to advertise for this in their locality and have simply not even without exercises create a platform for zoom meeting where girls where we can meet them like once a month for example and talk and drop a topic in the middle and have them play with it so they could without be anywhere yeah absolutely mm. anyway uh, the projects um when you were in saudi saudi arabia um what was the reaction that you got from like the girls but also from the wider public or the girls who actually came and did the exercises have enjoyed it a lot their parents felt that it was very age appropriate they appreciated you know some parents were challenged because also uh, the questions that these girls went back home to ask. I needed to talk to the parents to explain what's happening in these group activities so they understand when the girls come back and ask certain questions that they actually have a choice to say, you know, I haven't thought about this or to tell them exactly what they think and have a conversation around it. Especially when, um, I, I remember this clearly when we talked about privileges and ranks, uh, especially age 14 to 17, it was like, it created many discussions uh, and within the families. One of the girls said one time, I never thought that I would, I could ask certain questions. You never know. <clears throat> who get impacted by this and then one day they will carry a similar work 
as I have done. And if that happens, and when that happens, I'll be very happy. I'm aware that you have to. I have to leave your time. Before we go, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, no, but thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much um, for thank joining you, guys. Talking about this, and um, have a yeah, have a great uh, rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.